Hey, hey, good people. Arthur Morris here. I hope all is well. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at factoring a monomial from a polynomial univariate. So um, basically, we're looking at factoring, factoring out the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor, if you're looking at the numbers, it's the largest number that both of those two existing numbers can be divided by. So with 6 and 15, let's look at the factors of 16 or all the ways we can multiply to get, or 6, I'm sorry, all the ways we can multiply to get 6 here. So 6, we know that 1 times 6 is 6, and 2 times 3 is 6. So the factors of 6 would be 1, 2, 3, and 6. What about the factors of 15? Well, we know 1 and 15. And then 15 divided by 3 is 5, so 3 and 5. So the factors uh, 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15. So the greatest common factor, or the largest number that they both can be divided by, is 3. Now, when you're looking at the variables, if both terms have a particular variable, like both of these have n's, then your greatest common factor for your variables will be the smallest exponent because that's the most amount that they have in common. Okay, so my greatest common factor for 6n squared and 15n to the third is 3n squared. That's the greatest common factor for those two terms. So I'm going to factor out the greatest common factor, which means I'm going to write that greatest common factor outside of a set of parentheses here. And then I'm going to divide each one of the terms by that greatest common factor. And whatever I get after I divide, then that's what I write in parentheses. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. n squared divided by n squared, they cancel each other completely out. 15 divided by 3 is 5. n to the third divided by n squared, use the quotient rule, so subtract the 2 from the 3. So that gives us n to the first power. And there we have factored out our greatest common factor, 3n squared times 2 plus 5n. Now, if you wanted to check that, you can do what we've done before and multiply that back out using your distributive property. So I will check this one just to show you. 3n squared times 2 plus 3n squared times 5n. So 3n squared times 2 would be 6n squared. And then 3n squared times 5n, 3 times 5 is 15, n to the second times n to the first, add the exponents, n to the third. And you see that we go back to our original problem. We get our original problem, so we know it checks out. Alrighty, let's look at another factoring problem here. So again, we're going, we're going to factor out the greatest common factor. So we have 5 times w to the third plus 8 times w squared. Now the factors of 5 are 1 and 5. The factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. So the greatest common factor for the numbers is 1. Uh, however, since we have this, they both have w's, then we don't need to write that 1 out there since they both have w's. So w to the third and w squared, the greatest common factor for that would be w squared because that's the most amount that they both have in common. So I'm going to divide each one of those by w to the sec second power to see what goes in the parentheses. So 5w to the third divided by 1w squared would be 5. Subtract the exponents. So w to the first power. And 8w squared divided by w squared. Well, the w squared, w squared cancels out because if I subtract the exponents, 2 minus 2 is 0. So I just have 8 left. So 5 times w plus 8. w squared times 5 times w plus 8. All righty, let's look at another one. And you may want to pause the video and see if you can work this one out yourself. So we have 4 times a squared minus 15 times a to the third. Again, we don't have a common factor for 4 and 15 besides 1. Uh, but they do; those terms do have both have a's. So for a squared, a to the third, the GCF would just be a squared. 
So we're going to divide each one of these by a squared. And you can do that mentally. You don't have to write this step out. So 4a squared divided by 1a squared uh, is 4. And the a squares cancel each other out. 15a to the third divided by a squared, 15. And then subtract the exponents using your quotient rule. So a to the first power. And again, remember you can always check your answer by multiplying it back out using your distributive property. Alrighty, let's look at one more. All right, so here we have nine times m plus 10 times m to the third. Uh, so again, the numbers don't have common factors and just for the sake of this problem, let's um, change it up just a little bit. Let's make this uh, 25m for the sake of good practice, 25m plus 10m to the third. Okay, so looking at the numbers 25 and 10 to find the largest, we want to find the largest number that'll go into both 25 and 10, which is 5. So I'm going to write this 5 out here. And then they both have m's, but the most that they have in common is that m to the first power. So my greatest common factor is 5m. All right, divide both sides by 5m. So 25 divided by 5 is 5. m to the first divided by m to the first. They cancel each other completely out, so no m's left there. 10 divided by 5 is 2. m to the third divided by m to the first. Quotient rule, subtract the exponent. So if I subtract 1 from that 3, that's m squared. Alrighty, good people. Hope you found this video to be helpful. I will see you on the next one. Thank you.